Good evening, everyone. Who's with us? Oh, Jeffrey. I can see Jeffrey with us. I can see Hilton with us. Who else joining us? Ive and Anthony with us. Who else joining us? Erev Tov. Erev Tov. How are you, Jeffrey? Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Thank God. Jeffrey, do you, have, do you have the Tanakh? Do you have Tanakh? The full Tanakh in English? Yeah, uh, yes, I do. Then I'll, just, I'll, I'll go and look for it. I'll go and look I for need, it. I need the book of the prophet, uh, from the prophet, if you don't mind. Yes. Who's okay. prophet? Yecheskel? Yecheskel or Isaiah? A prophet Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah. I'll, I'll have a look, see if I can find it. Okay. 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 Prophet Jeremiah. Okay, let's wait another few more minutes for people to join us. We'll see who else joining us. Let me see. Someone else waiting to be admitted. I just admitted. It's another iPhone. I think that that's maybe George. George going to join us soon. Yeah, I see the George with us. Hello, George. Okay. Who else is going to join us? We just have to wait a few more minutes for people to join the show, and then we're going to start the show. There's Rat Hashem. The concept, the show that we're going to speak tonight, is about the concept of Shorovim. We spoke about it, if I'm not mistaken, two years ago, and then we spoke about it four years ago also. I mentioned the concept of Shorovim. But tonight we're going to explain more in depth the concept of Shogavim. Um, let me see who else joining us. I see that uh, Dr. Les join us. Louis now joining us. Dr. Les, oh. Erev Tov. How are you, Dr. Les? Shalom Rav. Shalom Rav, how are you? Baruch Hashem and oh. you. Give us the good news, Baruch Dr. Hashem. Les. Okay. Well, Rav, amazing news, incredible news. I don't know if it's been reported in South Africa, but um, they found that there were, uh, there were quite a few of the UNRWA uh, workers that were involved in the terrible terrorist attacks on, on Simchas Torah, and they've, been, um, they've actually been let off or, uh, who knows, suspended or whatever. But more than that, there are many countries, including uh, America, which gives the most, Germany, and uh, quite a few European countries that have suspended the funding. And I've been following the news on BBC, and I've been just following the news while I've been at work, where the UN are, they are shocked. And what are they shocked at? They're shocked that the, the countries are suspending their finance. They're not so shocked at what the actions of the UNRWA, what they did, but they're more shocked that the world is suspending the finance to this organization that perpetrated the most horrendous atrocities. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> it's mamish unbelievable. But Kola Kabot to America and to Germany and to uh, the Netherlands, a lot of these countries have um, suspended their funding. And um, and let's hope that, that you know, that, that before they they continue, that, that they'll make unbelievable, who knows what reforms. They have to reform they have the whole organization you know, they've been doing it for years. They've been teaching in their schools hatred towards Am Israel, hatred. They have they show the children textbooks on on how to kill Yidden, and they have summer camps. They, these are like war games, how to murder Yidden in their summer camps. They they breed hatred, and and the world has been giving them and funding, and it continues and it's shown, but nobody does anything. So now, for the first time, something has been done. So this is really quite a breakthrough. It's quite, and it's it's came as a very, very positive development. And the head of UNRWA was one that they mentioned at the in the Hague. She quoted his statement. Such a corrupt person who said he didn't know. Imagine the head of this organization, and he didn't know. But every school of these has got tunnels, and they've been complicit with 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 Hamas. Most of the Hamas members are members of UNRWA. So, Rav, it's, 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 it's an unfold, 
you know, the story is unfolding and um, who knows what's going to happen. But I think <laughs> a lot of the countries have, have said enough is enough because it makes them complicit in, in these murderers, in this, the greatest atrocity against the Jewish people since the Shoah. So it's, it's a very, very big story. And I don't know it's been shown in South Africa. But um, lastly, uh, people here, again, you know, when they hear that I'm South African, but then they also hear that we have a chief rabbi who is standing up to the government and standing up to the world. And it gives us such pride to say that, you know, that, that, that I know Rabbi Goldstein very well and his father Ezra very well. And people are so appreciative of the community. And just know, Rob, that what you and every the Jewish community in South Africa, it goes, we're having a very big demonstration actually on Friday in Renana, um, a pro-Jewish community of South Africa in solidarity here in Renana. And they've asked me if I could video that event. So definitely I'll be going to Renana to yeah, protest right. against what the government's doing. Well done. So, Rav Shavuotov, and this is really quite, quite unbelievable Shavuotov, news. Shavuotov. Like I say yesterday in the show, I just repeat to those of you that wasn't in the show. I don't know if you remember I mentioned that all of that take situation, I remember mentioning. Akadosh Baruch Hu say, and I explain, call the Avid Rahmana letav Avid, say our sages. Akadosh Baruch Hu say, everything that he doing, he doing it for the best of us. And we saw that we saw that the Hague, what they rule, it's actually work in a favor of us. Work against South Africa, against the ANC. Yeah. Now they're responsible for the hostages. Anyway, Israel giving them humanitarian food, medicine, yeah. whatever. We don't know, we don't want genocide. It's everything work out in a best of Israel. And Be'ezrat Hashem, that's how the Mashiach is going to be revealed. You know, it's step by step. The same like a woman giving a birth. It's step by step. She doesn't just give a birth. It's yeah. step. Now, it's the time that the baby coming out. So we're starting to see first the water break, the, the contraction getting stronger. After the water break, it's take time. The midwife have to come. And Be'ezrat Hashem, we see Mashiach soon. Shakwa, Dr. Thank you, Rob. Okay. What I, uh, the, the subject of the Sheol is going to be the concept of Shobavim. The concept of Shobavim, I spoke about it, um, the concept of Shobavim, I must mention, that I spoke yes, about it two years ago. Okay. Let me just, I need just to mute. Okay, I just muted. It was some noise in the background. Uh, I spoke about it four years ago, then I spoke about it two years ago, and I'm going to repeat it today, but I'm going to bring some of it I repeat two years ago, some I repeat four years ago, I'm, what I'm repeating now, and also I'm going to bring a new idea, and we'll explain the concept of Shovavim, what is Shovavim. But first, I would like to dedicate the Shaul in a soul of Esther Kaden, Bat Ketia, Mordechai Ben Rahma. תמר בת זהבה, איתן בן קרן ואבישי נאה, מלכה רג'ינה בת ג'ויה ויעקב סלומון בן פרחה. Also, I would like to dedicate the Sheol, בעזרת השם, in health of all of those soldiers that got injured, all those that need health and speedy recovery, and amongst them, ליאור אבת מרים, מנשה נג'י בן פחה, הרב משה בן באי אבתיה, הרב משה בן דבורה, הרב שלמה יהודה בן דליה, הרב אברהם בן מרינה, דבורה בת אסתר, שיינה קהילה בת חנה, מרדכי דוד בן לאה, יהודה הלל בן שולמית לאה, חיים נחום בן פסע רזע הכהן, ברוך בן שרה חיינה, אהובה קדן בת טלי אסתר, לאה בת רחל, פסע יצחק בן אלה, ואיילה, Eden, but Rivka, amongst all of those that need speedy recovery, amongst them the soldier, the member of the Israeli security forces that got injured. Be'ezrat Hashem, refuah shlema to all of them. The concept of Shovavim. What does Shovavim mean? The concept of Shovavim in a normal year refers to the six weeks that there is from the moment that we start reading the book of Shemot until we reach Parashat Mishpatim. 
on a leap year that it's exactly like this year, we're adding up another two parshiot that called Truma Tetzave. And I will explain. Shovavim is the increment of the name of the parshiot that we read for the six first parshiot. That means Shmot, Vaira, Bo, Beshalah, okay, Yitro, and Mishpatim. That stands for Shovavim. What is the word Shovavim mean? It means simply naughty. Okay? That's it. That's what it means, naughty. The word Shovavim means about a person that very naughty. In a leap year, Hazal constitutes, it's not Hazal, the mystical rabbi constitutes for us another two parshiot that it's called Trumat Etzaveh, and they call him the Ekrit, the Rashet Evot of it is Stat, because it's Taf Taf. That's how it starts. Where is the source to the word Shovavim? The source to it comes from the book of Jeremiah in chapter 3, verse 22, that our friend Jeffrey going to read for us shortly. I'm going to read it in Hebrew, and then I will translate, and then we'll try to understand the concept of Shavavim, just the idea of what's happening, and then we're going to start going deeper and deeper. Okay, so in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 22, it says like this, Shuvu banim Shavavim, Erpa Mishuvatchem. Jeffrey, Bechavo, don't forget to unmute the microphone. Okay. Uh, uh, I would just like to say, Rob, that the book I have is a book from the United Jewish Community in 1890. And it's, only, wow. and it's in English and on, on prophets. And now, so the English language is slightly awkward, but I'll try and and give it the, the, the effect that you you want. Okay. If I, it doesn't work, I'll have to, you'll have to get the, I don't have a, I cannot find my Tanakh at the moment. It's, it's, when I moved, I, I packed it somewhere. And, but anyway, a, a, a chap, chapter 22. Chapter it says, 3, chapter 3, verse 22. Chapter yes, 3, chapter I've got it here. verse 22. <laughs> Yes, it says, and <laughs> English, return you, backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Backsliding is going backwards. It's... Yeah, we'll explain now what does it mean. The prophet Jeremiah speaking to the children of Israel that during the time that before the destruction. The concept of Shobavim, it's mainly a mystical concept. What do we do on those six weeks in a normal year, in a leap year like this year? It's an eight week. We're going to explain shortly. But what's hiding behind what the prophet's saying? The prophet basically asks us to return back to Akadosh Baruch Hu. There is a commentary that called Metzudot David and Metzudot Sion. Okay? In a commentary that called Metzudot, it's been written by Rabbi David Alchela. Rabbi David Alchela, born in the city of Yombro in Galicia. He born around 337 years ago. And he started to write the commentary on a Tanakh that called the Metzudot. Rabbi David Alchela passed away while he was in the middle of writing the commentary on a Mitzudot, and his son Rabbi Yehiel, Rabbi Yehiel Hillel, finished the commentary just for general knowledge. And he explained there that here the prophet saying to the children of Israel, You, the children of Israel, you naughty one. Okay, that's what it said, return back. You naughty one. Actually, return back to me. Akadosh Baruch Hu said to the children of Israel, please return back to me. That means correct your deeds. Okay? So by that, 
that you're going to correct your deed. I'm going to do atonement to all your sin. That means for all what you revolt against me, I'm expecting from you only one thing. Do tshuva. That means return back to me. It starts doing tshuva. Simple as that. Say the mefarshim, say the metzudot, ba'ala metzudot, ba'alea metzudot, those that run the commentary, that Akadosh Baruch Hu asking the children of Israel to do tshuva. Simple as that. And that's where they come the name Shovavim. So Hazal, where, or the mystical rabbi, not Hazal, the mystical rabbi, when they came to call it Shovavim, they took it from the acronym of Sefer Shmot. Dafka Sefer Shmot. Because Sefer Shmot start with Parashat Shmot, Vayera, Bo, Beshalach, Itro, Mishpatim. On a leap year, we say that we're adding again the parashiot of Truma and Tetzaveh. And that tat. Okay, but we call it Shovavim, notings. Okay. Where is the, that was the source, that's where is the source to the name Shovavim. Okay. But we have to understand where come the minhag, the custom of Shovavim. So the custom has already been mentioned 600 years ago in a book that called Leket Yosher, a book that Leket Yosher that been written by Rabbi Yosef Yosfa. Rabbi Yosef Yosfa, he was a student of the Rabbi Israel Israel, Baal Trumat Adeshen. And in book 116, in the, in the book that called Leket Yosher, he mentioned first time, 600 years ago, the name of Shovavim, the custom of Shovavim. I will explain what we're doing in Shovavim. I just want to do an introduction, what we call to the idea of Shovavim. The second memorandum that we actually see that mention regarding the days of Shovavim, the weeks of Shovavim, it's uh, from a book that speak about the law and the custom, okay, of Rabenu Shalom. Rabenu Shalom, he was the rabbi of the Maharil. The Maharil is Rabbi Yaakov Halevi Mulin, okay? So he was his rabbi, Rabenu Shalom. Later on, around, if I'm not mistaken, close to 460 years ago, 400 and uh, even 50 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, it's starting to be published by Sha'ar HaMitzvot. Sha'ar HaMitzvot, it's a book that speak about the eighth gate. They call it the gate, okay? It's a Kabbalistic book that's been written by the Kabbalistic Rabbi De Maharu, Rabbi Haim Vital. Rabbi Haim Vital, he wrote it. But he wrote what his rabbi told him. Moreno Arabi Tzhak Luri Ashkenazi Hari Akadosh. That means on the third gate from the eighth gate, that means the fifth book, it's actually not the fifth book. It's Shmone Sharim, they call it the eighth gate. And there on the fifth gate, that it's Shara Mitzvot, there it speak about what we call it Shovavim. And what is it explained? That there Rabbeinu Ha'ari HaKadosh, Rabbi Tzhak Luri Ashkenazi, he born in Jerusalem, he born around plus minus uh, 490 years ago. Okay? And there he start to reveal to us the secret of the Shovavim. What is the secret of the Shovavim? Why is it being constituted for us, this concept of Shovavim, according to the mystical rabbi? And the, this, this concept of Shovavim, it's mainly a man, the Sfaradim doing it, the Sfaradim, the Hasidut, all the Hasidim actually very strong about it. The those that not follow Hasidut and the mystical part of the 
Torah, it's you don't gonna find the concept of Shovavim. But Rabenu Itzhak Luria Ashkenazi de Ari Akadosh explained that a matter of fact, there is here rectification for the sin of Adam Arishon. Mainly, mainly rectification for the sin of what we call it a, a similar emission. That means wasting seed. That's the main idea about I. Shovavim, it's one of the most important thing about it, and we will explain that actually each week referring to a different atonement, what we can do, but it's mainly for the sin of Adam Arishon. Believe it or not, the sin of Adam Arishon. Um, what is Shovavim? Shovavim, every week, in every week, we can do a torment to different Averot. We will get to it. When I say different Averot, different sin that we all easily can sin. We all easily can do stupid thing in life. And we'll see just now how it works. Hazal say that when I say Hazal, that's actually it's wrong to say Hazal, because Hazal is Hachamenu Zichonam Livracha, referring to our sages. It's it's more to say Hachmea Musar, Hachmea Kabbalah, explain that, and it's brought actually in a book of Toldot Aaron, in a book Toldot Aaron, and he said like this, Toldot Aaron, it was uh, Rabbi Aaron Rota, Rata, born around 100 years ago, and he, in his book, explaining this and he said that those six weeks of the Shovavim in the normal year and the leap year that it's eight weeks it's equivalent Rabota listen to that to Aseret Yemei Tshuva the ten days that between Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur believe it or not those days are they so important that a person can do Tshuva easily that the Kadosh Baruch Hu will accept our atonement. That means the day of Aseret Yemei Tshuva, that the Kadosh Baruch Hu accept us and want us to do Tshuva, you can do in Yemei Shovavim. Basically, if you take Yemei Shovavim, it's to tell us that Yemei Shovavim is the equivalent to Aseret Yemei Tshuva. Say, Atoldot Aaron. According to Ariya Kadosh, Rabbi Yitzhak Luria, and here he speak about the uh, the Shovavim, and he explained like this. He said that we explain that the rectification that we're doing in those days is the rectification for the sin of Adam Arishon. Adam Arishon, one of his sin that after he sinned, from eating from the tree of knowledge, he sit on Nahal Gishon, he gone and he sit inside the river of Gishon for 130 years, Hazal tell us in the Midrash, and he separated from Hava. He separated completely from Hava, and inevitably he wasted seed. He wanted to do a torment, but that, that he sit in the water and his flesh, his skin start to, you know, when you leave your hand a lot and you work a lot with water, the skin become very soft and it's starting to tear. And that's what he suffered. Say Rabbi Itzhak Luria Ashkenazi, Ariya Kadosh, Rabbeinu Ariya Kadosh, that it's all about the sin of wasting seed. And where is it ended? Listen to that, how we explain. It's end in Parashat Mishpatim in a normal year that speak about the rectification. Sorry, Parashat Mishpatim speak in the end about every the law of a Jewish slave. And that's where it's end, the rectification of Adam Arishon for all the sins of Adam Arishon. So 
that brings us to the second part. Why Dafka Shavavim fall during the time that we read the book of Shemot, the first six parshiot of the book, the first six parshiot from the book of Shemot, and Alipia is the eighth. Why Dafka? So we explain, I just repeat it quickly, that Shavavim is the acronym of the first letter of each parsha, that it's Shmot Vayera, Shmot Shin, Vayera is Vav, Bo Beshalach, that means Bet Bet, Itro is Yud, the Mishpatim is Mem, Shavavim. In the leap year, we say it's Trumat, it's Ave, it's Tat. Okay, so what's hiding behind? Why Dafkana? Because the Parashat of Shmot tell us, first of all, that the children of Israel now go into slavery in the Eretz Mitzrayim. That means that the children of Israel go to Mitzrayim, the exile start, and Galut Mitzrayim, that the exile of Mitzrayim started, and Bnei Israel then become slave. That means Bnei Israel been put to hard slavery. While they was in Egypt, what led them to slavery? Okay, because they didn't follow the mitzvot. They didn't keep the mitzvot. They didn't absorb the mitzvot that Yaakov Avinu told them. And that's what led them later on to reach to the 49 level of Tuma. That means reach to the 49 level of impurity. And then in Parashat Bo and Parashat Beshalach, we read already about the, uh, sorry, Parashat Vaira and Parashat Bo, we read about the plagues. And then we come Parashat Beshalach, that, that's when the Jewish people basically now left Egypt. That means that the Jewish people, for the first time after 210 years, leaving Egypt. And then we have, again, the parshiot of Yitro that is standing in Mount Sinai. They're receiving the Torah. Mishpatim is the law that speak about all the laws of Evedivri to tell us that to teach us that where we was, where we reached, how low Bnei Israel reached in Eretz Mitzrayim from the moment that Yaakov Avinu passed and the 12 tribe passed away, the, 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 the drop down, the deterioration of Bnei Israel completely right down to the bottom. And a Kadosh Baruch Hu then done 360 degrees change and redeemed the people, children of Israel. And not only that, he given them the Torah. He given them the law and the mitzvot. Okay, and then obviously Parashat Truma that speak about the, the damnation. What? To build the tabernacle. Okay? That means to reach to the highest level, to rebuild the protocol Bet Mikdash. The Mepashim, you know why we read it? To teach us something very important. If Bnei Israel reached to such rock bottom, Akadosh Baruch Hu redeemed them, you have to understand that Dafka, when you read about all of those stories where Bnei Israel reached, that's how you should understand that during this time of Shovavim, you can do rectification for the sin of Adam Arishon that we all have a spark in our neshama from the soul of Adam Arishon. That means each one of us is a spark from the neshama of Adam Arishon. Okay. One of the most important things that we have to work on Shavavim, that means what is the most important thing for us to do on Shavavim? It's to understand that we have to work on our character trait. And now we're going to get it soon to explain what we can do every week, how we can rectify different sin. But 
we have to understand that wise Hazal or wise the mystical rabbi, again, I'm correcting myself, I get used to say Hazal, why is the mystical rabbi constitute for us this, this concept of Shavuvim? Hazal tell us in, uh, in Midrash Rabbah like this. Ma'ase avot siman lebanim. The deeds of the father is a sign for the kids. That means it's come to tell us, I know that your fathers in Egypt reach the rock bottom. The 49 level of Tuma. Akadosh Bahu redeemed them. They done Chuba and the merit to receive the Torah. To teach us that if a person do Chuba on those days, Akadosh Bahu will forgive all of his sin. Okay? And he can change from rock bottom to rise up in spirituality. What is the sin that we have to work? And how does it work? So what is every week do? For example, Hazal, this again I'm saying Hazal, the mystical rabbi explained that when we read the Parashat Shmot, the first parasha in the book of Shmot, if person has to do and work, it, this is more for the men, for the male. Okay, to work on about the sin of wasting seed. There is no such thing that a person can say that he didn't waste seed. To do that atonement, it's the same what's happened to Adam Arishon when he sit in Nahal Gishon. That means Parashat Shmot, the person has to focus about modesty, okay? to work on his character trait. That means to work on his desire. Parashat Vaira, okay, that's to do a torment for a person that been with a Nida woman. That means if you've been with a woman that not his wife before he got married, or you've been with his wife that never gone to the mitzvah, the mikvah, that means to do a torment for Nida. How are we going to do, how to do that, I will explain soon. Parashat Bo is to do a torment that the person that been with a Gentile woman. Parashat Beshalah, that we read this Shabbos, that's we doing a torment for what we call the character trait of anger. Now we're moving to different character trait. The character trait of anger person that get cross, lose his temper, because Hazal tell us a person that get cross and get angry is like a worshipping idols. Parashat Yitro, that Be'ezrat Hashem is going to read this Shabbos, a person can do a torment for the sin of proud and arrogancy. A person that is arrogant person that is very proud Azal tell us that this week you can work on that character trait Parashat Mishpatim the last parsha, in a normal year it's for the sin of honoring your father and your mother and that's what I mentioned earlier most of the sin is very easier for us to sin because when we don't speak nicely to our parents, we didn't behave well, okay? We didn't stand in the front of our parents. Hazal say that you have to understand that parashat mishpatim, it's to do a torment for that sin. To do a torment, rabotai, for what we call unrespecting your and un honoring your father and your mother. That's how it works in every week. So how do we do that? That's the most difficult part that we're going to tackle today. What is the idea behind doing rectification during those weeks? How do we do that? 
So these different things that the mystical rabbi explained to us, how to do atonement. And they said the first important thing that the mystical rabbi, the Hasidim, the, the pious, they say that the first thing that you have to understand is studying Torah. So everyone will say, but wait a minute. All year around, you're obligated to learn Torah. say yes. But during those six weeks, in the leap year, eight weeks, you have to study Torah if it's Torah Shebechtav, the written Torah, or Torah Shebealpeh, the oral Torah, Be'yun. What it means, Be'yun? In depth. To understand what's hiding behind every word. And if you study Torah Be'yun during those weeks, if it's Torah Shebechtav, Torah Shebealpeh, if you learn Gemara in depth, if you learn Mishnah, you learn it with depth, okay? Whatever you learn, you learn it with depth. If you learn Parashat Shabuah with Mefarshim in depth, say Hazal, that can do a torment for the idea of Shoravim, those character traits that we have to work on. Come the Orachai Makadosh. Orachai Makadosh was Rabbi Haim Ben Atar. Rabbi Haim Ben Atar, born in Morocco in the city of Sali 328 years ago. In his commentary, he explained something that if we understand that, we can see the fundamental idea of our Torah. We know that the word Torah means menu. Say Rabbi Haim Ben Atar, and he asked a very valid question. Why? The children of Israel have to go to the exile of Egypt and to be punished with slavery, hard slavery. We know hard slavery. Why? Why Dafka that? So here we need the mystical rabbi and they explain. Oh. This. First of all, let's understand who was that generation. The children of the children of Israel, who they was. Because until now, there wasn't a nation. There was the children of Yaakov Avinu. That was not Judaism. Hazal explained that it actually was the generation of Adam Arishon, the generation of Noah. That means the generation of the flood during the time of Noah the Tower of Babel that we know, the generation of Zdom, Va'amora, all of that. All of that soul get reincarnate in the children of Bnei Israel. And they gone down to Egypt. Say Orahai Makadosh. You know why they have to suffer so hard with hard slavery? because they didn't receive the Torah. If they received the Torah and they will study Torah, that will do a torment to all the sin and then they didn't have to go to slavery. He said by that, that the person study Torah doesn't have to go to, through all of that. And we know, Rabotai, that the slavery that they have to do it's because they didn't have the Torah. So how are they going to do tshuva? They didn't even know what to do. Now, that in the olden days, it was enough to believe in Akadosh Baruch Hu, not to be idol worshiper. But they done different sin. We know that Dora Mabul, the generation of Noah in, in the flood, they sin with immorality. The generation of the Tower of Babel, they sin with Abu Dazara idol worshipping. The generation of the uh, Sdom Va'amora, that means the city of Sdom and Amora, they sin with what we call that they was to care only about themselves. They didn't care about anyone else. They didn't help each other. They didn't have 
kindness. They didn't understand what is its kindness. Okay? In Zdom Vamor. Although that they have too much, they didn't want to give anyone from what they have. They, the Mekubalim, that that's all of those three generation or four generation, if you want to call it, all get reincarnate and gone down to Egypt to do atonement for their sin. By that, that we receive the Torah, say Rabbi Haim ben Atar, if you study Torah Dafka during those weeks of Shoravim, those six weeks that from the beginning of Sefer Shmot until Mishpatim, on leap year until Parashat Tetzaveh, that it's eight weeks, you can do atonement for all sin. By that, that you study Torah in depth, you actually do an atonement and you can save from yourself a lot of Torahs. The Mephoshim explained that how do you do that tikkun? Tikkun is the rectification. How do we fix all of that? So the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, Baal Shem Tov, we all hear about him, is Rabbi Israel ben Eliezer. His father was Eliezer. We made a show six weeks ago about him, Rabbi Eliezer. That was his father or his mother Sarah. He born in the city of Mezebuz. Mezebuz is a city in uh, Ukraine. He born around 324 years ago, plus minus, okay? And he said that since his souls came down to the world, people don't have to do taniyot. What does it mean, taniyot? We know that we have four, we have four time that we have to fast. Four taniyot, taniyot is a fast. But he says that when people do averot, they have taniyot bahad. That means taniyot of Monday and a Thursday. That means that they don't eat. They all do all different taniyot. He said that since his soul came down to this world, he doesn't to a kadosh baruch Hu, by that that he's going to come to this world. It's doing a torment. How do you do a torment? Not by fasting, not by making yourself suffering. You have to work hard in a Torah. You have to work hard in a Torah. Until say Rabbi Elimelech Milizank. Rabbi Elimelech Milizank born in the city of Tiktin in Poland. He born around 317 years ago. Listen what he said. He said something else. He said when a male, are uh, referring to male, when a male going to the mikvah, okay, that's going to do a torment that after 120, when he go up to Shamayim, he doesn't have to go cross Nahar Dinur, the river of Dinur. What is Nahar Dinur? The mystical rabbi explained to us that when the angel standing and saying Kadosh, Kadosh, like we saying, you know, the Kedusha, they sweat. That sweat that comes from those angels, each drop of sweat, it's like a boiling, like 800 degrees water create from that, if not a thousand. Hazal say Nahar Dinu is like a cleanse that, that every person go. He said when a person go, especially during those weeks that there is between Shmot until Mishpatim, the time of Shovavim and during the time of Trumat Etzaveh, the eight weeks and the leap year, that will help him not to see, not to go to a cross, Nahar Dinu. Now, Rabotai, I tried to explain on Shabbos, but we didn't have time. Why did Ben Israel have to go through the sea of reeds? Why did Akadosh Baruch Hu decide to split the sea? What was the Hidush? Why did they have to go through the sea? What was the Hidush behind it? But I, we know when a person go to the mikvah, he get a new soul. A person that get convert, 
the first thing that they have to do after they've done Brit Mila and obviously drawing blood, they have to go to the mikvah. The mikvah is water that you get under the water and it gives you a new soul, a new neshama. You like a new creation. We know that if a ship sunk on a sea, after a while, nothing left from it. That means that when you go into the mikvah, the same like the water, get rid of everything, every evidence, everything get rusted, the shape of the boat, the, 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 whatever is it, if it's a boat or if it's a ship, whatever is it that sunk in the water get changed. He said by that, that you're going under the water, said the Mekubalim, Listen to that, that you get a new neshama, a new shape. Say by that, that you go into the mikvah during those time, you can do a toyment. And that will help you later on to get a new shape. Rabbi Elimelech Melizan. Another idea that we have to do during those six weeks, that we all know that the power of saying Tehillim. The power of saying Tehillim, it's one of our secret weapon that no one can take it from the Jewish people. The power of saying Tehillim. But there is special 10 chapter of Tehillim that's called the Tikkun Klali. Tikkun Klali, it's been constituted by Rabbi Nachman Mibreslev. And I will give you all those uh, uh, those poems, those chapters. We'll go through them. What is the secret of Tikkun Klali? I want to explain. Tikkun Klali is the 10th capital of the healing. That's all. He didn't wrote it. He just revealed to us the power of the 10th capital of the healing that can do atonement for a person. That when a person said those specific 10 capital of the healing is like a different soul. And they are capital number 16, 32, 41, 42, 59, 77, 90, 105, 135, and 150. I repeat, 16, 32, 41, 42, 59, 77, 90, 105, 137, and 150. Those are the 10 capital of the healing that call Tikkun Klali. What is it, Tikkun Klali? Tikkun Klali, when you say it, it's doing rectification for everything. The soul get actually new power. Rabbi Nachman Mi Breslev, that born around 254, 254 years ago in the Ukraine, he born also in the city of Mezebush. Mezebush. He's, he revealed that to us. Many righteous people, many tzaddikim before tried to reveal it. They didn't merit. As a matter of fact, before they have the chance to reveal that secret of Tikkun Klali, they die. They die. Lo'alem. Those 10 capital of Tehillim, Rabbi Nachman Bishlev had to re reveal to us, but he also suffered. When he revealed it, first of all, he lost his kids. He died also in a young age. He died in the age of 38. That's Rabbi Nachman Bishlev, the great Rabbi Nachman Mi Breslev, 38, that's all. Unbelievable. And Hazal explained that the secret of Tikkun Klali is to do a torment, but to cancel all bad degree that there is on a human being. That means that there is any decree, has v'shalom, on a human being, by that that he's saying Tikkun Klali is doing a torment. Especially for male that wasted sea. When you read those 10 capital of the healing, if you read the word 
and you go to the Mephashim, you can see that there's a lot of secret behind it. The third thing that can help to do atonement for the sin of Adam Arishon, to that what we call Shavavim, that we sin, Rabotai, it's, we say that it's the healing. Sorry, first of all, I have to explain where do we learn that. He say, if you take the first, uh, the first six, yeah, the first five words of Parashat Shmuel, how does it start? He says, if you take the last letters of every word, it's hey, taf, yud, lamed, mem, hey, you'll get the word Tehillim. That's mean. Here's a proof that when you say Tehillim, it's, it's for atonement. Especially during those six weeks, that we have, that we call them Shovavim. There's another idea that we have to understand that can do a lot of atonement for the Jewish people, and it's Shabbat. People that keep Shabbat on those days, many people, many of you, if not all, please God, all of you, I'm sure that all of you keep Shabbos, they have to understand that the power of Shabbat is to do atonement to all the tourists that the person have for all the decree. He say like this, the Mekubalim say something extraordinary. He say if a person keeps Shabbos, he must take on himself something new to put on a table a different dish that he doesn't do. If he speak on Shabbos thing that not in honor of Shabbat during the time of Shabbat, Dafka on those Shabbatot to speak more about about more about the Gdushat Shabbat, more about things that referring to halacha, referring to the honor of Shabbat. He said the power of Shabbat can do atonement to all your sin. He said, where do you learn that Shabbos is one of those things? So the Mepharshim say like this. It said that in a parsha it said, Et Yaakov, Ish ubeito. That means that when Yaakov gone down to Egypt, each member of his house gone with him. He said, if you take the three word et Yaakov ish, take the last letter of every word et is stuff. Yaakov is bet. Ish it's shin. You get the word Shabbat. He said the power of Shabbat is to do atonement for all our sin. That especially during those six weeks that we have Shovavim. And a leap year is an eight year, I repeat again. Not only that, the power of Shabbat, that the person has to understand that what does it mean a person Shomer Shabbos? He Shomer Shabbos. But what can I do extra in the honor of Shabbat? Put a new dish, like I mentioned to accept Shabbat earlier. That means that the house should be ready much earlier than usual. Okay? The house should be clean and prepared in honor of Shabbat earlier. Not to read the circular book on Shabbat during those six weeks. That can change a lot in a soul of a person and to do atonement for all the has the shalom the abonot. Another idea of Shabbat Hazal tell us something very important. When I say Hazal, now I'm referring to Hazal. Hazal tell us in a Gemara in Masechet Shabbat that when a person in Friday night, when he's in Shul, Rabotai, listen to it. When you say with the congregation, Vayachelu hashamayim ve'aret, Vayachulu hashamayim ve'aret. That means when you say those words that now Start the creation of the heaven of the earth. That means now it's finished. The creation that Akadosh Baruch who created the heaven and the earth. Immediately, 
coming down immediately, I repeat it immediately, coming down from heaven to angel. They put the hand on the head of every person that say it. And they're blessing him. And they say, Vesar avonecha vehatatcha tefupar. That means that by that that you're saying, Vayachulu ashamayim vearetz, immediately those angels put a hand on the top of every Jew in shul, as long that he's doing proper tshuva and not after shul immediately driving home with a car. It means keeping shabbat. They say, Vesar avonecha, we erase all your sin. Vehatatcha, and your sin gonna have atonement. Immediately after that, when he walk home, those two angels walk with him. That means accompany him to his house. How much so? If that's all year round, how much so during those six weeks when a person take on himself to study more Torah in depth? To understand what's hiding behind everything. Not only that, saying the healing, especially the tikkun klali. The tikkun klali that doing atonement to midat hayesod. What it mean midat hayesod? Midat hayesod, it means that a person work on his physical desire, control his physical desire. He said that that's what we can rectify. Not only that, then comes Shabbat, the beautiful Shabbat. With those three elements, we can actually rectify and erase all our sin. Said the Mekubalim. There is something else that we have to understand that we have and is there is three elements that we have to understand that we have to work very hard on the Yemea Shovavim, especially beside all of what we spoke about, the immorality, let's call it, like we explained earlier. It's kibud. What it means, kibud, is honoring. That a person have to remember that there is atonement for respecting and honoring your parents. But beside that, there is the element of arrogance. Arrogance means that a person treat other people like I don't want to say it. I don't know how to say it. I do want to say it, but I don't know how to say it properly. They treat other people like they less than him. Inferior. Inferior. Shakoa, Jeff. That means to teach us that the person has to work on himself to honor everyone, to respect everyone. You don't have to agree with, I say again, but to honor and respect. And by Azrat Hashem, that now that we learn the concept of Shoravim, that mystical idea, and Akadosh Baruch Hu will accept our atonement, will accept our rectification, will, will accept our good deeds, Be'ezrat Hashem, and will do atonement to all our sin, especially for the sin of what we call dividing that we wasn't, and Be'ezrat Hashem, now that we honor and respect each other, we'll speak to each other differently, we understand each other differently. That unity and keeping Shabbos, reading Tehillim, studying Torah and Devs can change the decree on the individual and all the Jewish people. That's mean the individual person can do tshuva, but that tshuva can also be applicable to the rest of the Jewish people. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, Rabotai, whatever left from the Shavavim, left for us, now we're going to agree, Itro, 
אוקיי? פרשת יתרו that we have, we have uh, משפטים, תרומה, תצווה, we still have at least another four weeks that we can change everything. And if HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgive our fathers in Egypt that reach, that reach to the 49 level of Tuman, we have better tools. We have the Torah, we have Tehillim, we have Shabbat that they didn't have. They didn't have all of those tools. If we take those tools and during the, with the Torah, to work on our character trait. When we learn Torah, if Torah Shabichtav is Torah Shabalpe, it doesn't make a difference. Read it with depth. Try to understand the Mepharshim, what's hiding behind us. That can do a torment to all our sin. And if HaKadosh Baruch Hu Be'ezrat Hashem will see that we're doing our efforts, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will help us to do tshuva. And by Ezrat Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will accept our tshuva, like the Gedolim said, that those days, that the equivalent, Rabotai listened to that, okay, told Dota Aaron, that it's exactly like Aseret Yemesh tshuva, on the same level. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu will accept our atonement, forgive the Jewish people for all the sin, and by Ezrat Hashem, that you see that we live in unity, in peace together, We absorbing the mitzvot, he will do a torment to all the Jewish people and will send us mitziah titzkenu speedily in our day. Amen ken yeratzon. Rabotai, to those of you that have question, I'm sure that you have quite a bit of question about that mm-hmm. difficult concept that calls shovavim, you can ask question. Bechavod. Ken, bechavod. Any question, Rabotai? Ken, Bechavot, Frank. How are you? There's one practical thing I want to ask you. Yes. We're already on uh, the next passage, Yithro. So we've missed about four or five already from the beginning. So uh-huh. we just carry on now. I mean, we still got a few left. Am I right? Uh-huh. So what do we Another do about four. those? <laughs> hmm? Another four. Another four parts. Yeah. So that's fine. But I mean, we should have actually started Absolutely. right at the beginning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hmm, We didn't know I about always, it. <laughs> I always say it's better. It's better yeah. late than never. Yeah, yeah. And you have to understand, yeah. Akadosh Baruch Hu, Akadosh Baruch Hu Bohen Levavot. What does it mean, Bohen yeah. Levavot? Akadosh Baruch Hu, he's the one that understand behind everyone's heart what's sitting. Mm. If a person wants to do tshuva, If a person want to do tshuva, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will accept his atonement. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to do one step. If you don't do one step, we're not on a level that he'll do miracle for us. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me explain to you. And I explained it in a show on Shabbos. I know that on, you, you, you don't live nearby and you couldn't come to the show on Shabbos. I explained the difference between the wall with that Ben Israel had the war with Pharaoh, the being the war with Amalek. What does it mean? When it came to the war to fight with Pharaoh, Akadosh Baku told the children of Israel, attempt Tahrishun, you should be silent and I will fight for you. When it's come to the war of Amalek, Akadosh Baku said to Moshe Rabenu, tell Yeshua, בחר לך אנשים ויצא למלחמה על עמלק. That means, when it came to fight with Pharaoh, הקדוש ברוך הוא said to the children people, you're all going to keep quiet and I will fight for you. But when it came to the war with עמלק, הקדוש ברוך הוא command משה רבנו to choose and to make an army, to choose soldier and to make an army to go and fight with עמלק. Why? HaKadosh Baruch Hu couldn't fight with Amalek? If he can fight with, <laughs> with Pharaoh, the great metropolitan of all the world, he easily can fight with Amalek. So what's the difference? Rabotai, there is here a fundamental idea for, a fundamental idea for us to understand. 
And what's the fundamental idea? The idea is, when there is a physical wall, Akadosh Baruch Hu said, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to show you that I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to show you the miracle. That's a physical wall. But when there is a wall that it's about the spirituality of the Jewish nation, Akadosh Baruch Hu say, you have to do the first steps. And then I will join you. But first, I want you to fight. I want you to go to war. And if you look at the history of the Jewish people, that's what always happened. If we stood by our religion, by our spirituality, and we fought for it, we always win. And that's our downfall at the moment, that the Muslim fight against us in the name of religion. And we don't fight in the name of religion. At the moment that we put the name of religion to it and we fight really as a Jewish people for the sake of our Torah, Akadosh Baruch is going to be with us. You follow? Yes, yes, yes. One so other all question. What, Akadosh, what we expect from us to do our first mm. steps. Yeah. The seven? Yeah. One yes. other question. Tikkun Akali. Tikkun Akali, I always say between the 10 days of repentance, you know? So must we say that every day or once a week or what now? I mean, okay. you know? Uh, Hello? You're asking a very, very good question. Yes. You're, asking, yes. you're asking a very good question. The power of Tikkun Klani is for all year around, first of all. Okay. All year around. If you can right. say it every day, say it every day. Okay. All right. That's the power. Of those ten poem okay. of the hymn. All right. There's okay. ten capital. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Rebbe. Okay. Any other question, Rabotai? Any other question regarding the subject? Yes. Yes, Rob. May I, may oh. I say, I'll say something? You know, Rav, it, this this is quite a. We came to the Yamsuf, we came to the series. So, are you saying that because they went through the series, it was like going through a mikvah? They weren't the same people that came out on the other side. They when all they received the almost reeds, like a mikvah. Need to like correct you. When they gone inside the sea of reeds, it was a mikvah for them. Yes. Okay. Yes, when they yes, when they win the sea, when they yeah, see. Exactly. So basically, they came they came out with a new with a new neshama. All that they were all renewed. absolutely, absolutely. Where do we see it? Where do you learn that? Vehayam lahem homa mismolam uniminam. That means that the sea was a wall to them from the left and from the right. And we explain in the show when Bnei Israel gone through Kiryat Yamsuf through the sea, it was like the water turned like a wall on the top, on the right hand side, on the left hand side, and on top of them. It was like a cover. Yes. You yes. understand? It's like they gone through the mikvah. That's why they have to go. To change their soul, because they reach the 49 level of Tuna. To get pure, you have to go to the mikvah. We know. The Torah tells us that during the time of Beta Mikdash, if a person yes. gets contaminated, how does he get pure? By going to the mikvah. Mm -hmm. If a coin got contaminated, he going to the mikvah. Okay? That's what Akadosh Baruch Hu done. He took them out of Egypt. And though that they reach to the 49 level of Tuna, he need to purify them. How does he going to purify them? Put them through Yamsuf, and then they start giving them all the mitzvot. Until they reach 49 days later to Mount Sinai to receive what? The Holy Torah. But then they was completely 
different soul, the new soul that got purified. Right. So this asks, this is a, this is another question. You you mentioned that Adam should try to purify 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 himself. Where did he go? In the water. Hundred and thirty years, but in the water. In his level, he's wasting seeds. He done wasting right. seeds. So then, so, what, so, so it's like it's like a tovel sheretz. A tovel, a person that has I'll tell us, a person that go to the mikvah v'sheretz beado. But it's a that's on a shot of the dvarim. The Adam Arishon, it's a different level. It's a creation of a kadosh baruch who is not in our level. It was it was a different level? He he wanted to do rectification to all of those souls. So all of those lost souls. Because when a person lose seeds, waste seeds, he actually wastes neshama. There is neshama on it. And those neshama uh, cause a lot of problems. It's not to speak on it on light. It was, it was on a mystical level. At night, you don't speak about it. What's happened to those souls? They turn to a different yeah. thing. So all the harmful, if you understand, they turn yes. to all the harmful yes. things that there is in the world. In the world. Yeah. So th therefore, taking this as what you've taught us, the, the, the mystical river said we cross a river, as we cross a river from coming from one dimension to another when we pass. This mm -hmm. going to a mikvah would, does, would, Rectifies you don't go through that river. Yeah, rectify the soul. Rectify and you become a different right. person. As so you I'll need say, to go through that river if you're not rectified. Not to the river, to a normal mikvah, main mikvah. You can go to no, the I mean, I'm mikvah. talking about a river when one passes, when you haven't been rectified, you have to go through that rectification. Nahon. Through that Nahon. That's how they that's how they gone. Through that purification, you know, oh. I, I had, uh, I had a student that lived here, and then he gone to South America. And Baruch Hashem is in Eretz Israel. I kept in touch with him, and he used to get cross for every little thing. You know, there's people that every little thing makes them jump. You know, it's like, they're like, they're like a spark of fire. You know, and one day he said to me, listen, I can't anymore. I'm just losing it with that angry. I said to him, go to the mikvah. And Hazal, okay, it's a, it's a bit misty, more mystical. And I said to him, go underneath the water 150 one time. It's gematria kaas, anyway. It's very quickly, it's maybe 10, 15 minutes. You do that, it's finished 150 dunks. Okay, you don't have to stay underneath the water for too long. Up and down, up and down. And after a while, he said to me, listen, I'm starting to be a different human being. I don't get cross for every little thing. I don't get uptight from every little thing. So there's a lot of secret, secret about the mikvah. People think that mikvah is only for women. Oh, there's a different different law of the water. A person can dunk in his own swimming pool. When a woman can't, a woman has to have mind hayu. A person, a, a male, can dunk on mind shuvim. Okay, it's a different. So that's mean to tell us that it's a different situation. But once that you go under the water, it's a different story. A person can go to his own private pool Jump in and out, it's a different, different neshama. As long as you have in mind that you're thinking. Ah. There's different ideas about it. The thinking, That's what really are you thinking? That you want to work on your cars, to work on your, what character trait? In fact, the, 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 uh, the, the sages, were so spiritual and so deep 
it actually affected even the nations that conquered us. They even took on certain of the, and understood certain of the things, people, some of the people are from minority, but they understood and they believed of what actually we believe in. The Greeks did some and the Greeks did and some the Romans did and what have you. In fact, there was a Roman, one of probably the greatest pro writers, a fellow called Virgil. Virgil he did all Latin prose and he was brilliant. And he talks about a death. You come to the river, you pay money and you're taken across. <laughs> you're taken because without paying, without repenting, without doing it, you don't cross the river. It's quite fascinating how he writes, but this was just one small part of what he's, I mean, his volumes. Uh, so the, the Morphosium, the effect of what they have done in this world, it, it, it affects the whole of the world. Not, I mean, not just, not just what we learn. I mean, it's very, it's for us. It's for us. But those, there are certain souls that may be reincarnation of people before they were Jews and what have you, that we that pe people converted, people come back. So there are certain people that know truths and uh, uh, know certain truths, but they don't know where they know the truth from. They, they either make it up or it comes from them. But it's just uh, fascinating how, yeah, how, how the river, that, that river is, uh, is brought up. It's, it's very important. So the mikvah for us is, is it, uh, is it on a daily basis? Do, do you do it? So I tell you, so I tell you, you know, it's very important if a person can daven in a mikvah daily, okay, especially before we go to daven shahri. Um, yeah, to purify it, it's a different soul every day. Mm. Get a different soul. The Mekubalim do it every day. But if you can't do it every day, at least in honor of Shabbat. It's a big thing in honor of Shabbat. Yeah. yeah. It's a big yeah. thing in honor of Shabbat. Right. No, that's, thanks, Rob. Thanks. Uh, that's uh, yeah. very yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Thank you. I know that the concept of Shoravim is a bit depth. I was thinking twice if to bring it again, but I think that we should know there are certain things that, yes, the different concept, the heavy concept, it's more Kabbalistic concept, but we have to know about it. Hmm. Any other question, Rabotai Bechavod? Rabbi, sorry, another thing I just wanted to ask you was this. Remember you said right at the beginning, it means naughty. You said we Naughty, remember naughty and they, so Shoravim why naughty, so, yeah. yeah, so is that why they chose this particular period um this week yes. because we have become naughty, but whatever naughty means we, we went away from a sham and everything like that. Is this is why they chose this particular period to do repentance? That's one idea. The other idea is to teach us that in the var or med bifnachuva, there's nothing that if a person done atonement mm. that's not going to release because our true, our fathers that was in Egypt mm. they reached the 49 level of tomb there was yeah. idol mm. worshippers mm. that they never did okay and Akadosh Baruch Hu redeemed them and given them the Torah but they had to go through the sea of reeds to yeah. get a different neshama in honor to receive <laughs> later on the Torah in 49 days mm. later. Right, thank you. You follow? Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's a bit depth, I understand. I try to make it as easy to understand. There's a lot into it. There's a lot that are uh, uh, actually served. A lot of concepts the concept of the, the, the full world, Olam, Abia, Atsilut, Bria, Yetzira, Asiya, all of those concepts, the world of nobility, and it's very involved, but I didn't want to touch that. That's going to make it very complicated to understand. So I try to serve for us that what we can absorb, what I can absorb, you're obviously more smarter than me, but what my brain can absorb. Do you know what I'm saying? 
Okay, but I, I hope that you enjoyed the show. I would like to wish all of you, uh, first of all, Shavua Tov, that you should have a beautiful week. And Be'ezrat Hashem, that we should hear more good news. And we will, as I mentioned, as I mentioned on the Shaul last Sunday, when I spoke about Tu Bishvat. From Tu Bishvat, everything starts changing in the luck of the Jewish people. Yeah. And we see it. Tu Bishvat was Wednesday night, Thursday. Already on Friday, Akadosh Baku smiled to us. Absolutely. And he changed the verdict. Mm. International court. In favors of us. Already the world starting to see the other side of all what's happening in the world. All of those snakes. Where is all the money coming from? Where all the money going through? Who's behind all of that? Who have all of those fingers all over? Who's the octopus behind all of it? Let's put it this way. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, we'll see more miracle. Akadosh Baruch Hu love us. Akadosh Baruch Hu never desert us. And he will never desert us. And Be'ezrat Hashem, we'll see miracle. Speedily in our day, Amen, Ken Yeratzon. Amen. Rabotai, have a good week. Shavu Atov to all of you. Enjoy the week. Have a safe week. Be'ezrat Hashem, that we're here only Be'ezrat Tovot, and we'll see Mashiach Tzitkenu. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Sure, so. Thank you. Shavua tov, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Have a good one. Good night. Good night.